Just real quick. Welcome, welcome. My name is Solange Ellen, and we're recording this child protection support group conversation uh, from Nadri Nation. That's where I am. Um, I'm on this call with Donna Markwell and Phil and Steph and Eliana from Peru, which is really cool. Um, so Donna, do you want to just give us a bit of an update on, you know, how things are going for you and Takara now that you are reunited as a family? Yeah, thanks, Solly. Um, it's amazing and, and is a miracle that we have resolved this issue in 36, 37 days with DCP uh, paying for mum and dad to fly down and fly back and accommodation and everything. So that is truly um, unheard of, really, unheard of. So we've got the, the formula of what worked for me. People seem to still be uh, hesitant and fearful about um, even sort of uh, chatting openly about it. So again, like we spoke previously, Solly, people are really very heavily indoctrinated into the fear of it. And um, so we, we, you know, we really encourage some brave people and brave parents to step up and, and hold these criminals to account. Now I charge them $10,000 an hour for having Takara, for, for holding her hostage, for, for taking her. And uh, you know we're looking at ways that we can enforce that. So that's the next step is compensation. And I don't feel that I need to go to a psych psychiatrist. Mum's lawyer said, oh, you'll need to go to a psychiatrist and show how much trauma they've done. Well, no, I'm not going to feed into the system and go to a psychiatrist and show them how much trauma I've done to get $10,000 or, or $30,000 or $5,000 from stupid DCP. No, they were invoiced and they're invoiced for $10,000 an hour. Like we, so, on social media, we released that. It was put into an affidavit. They know they know that um, that will be their bill. So um, they have now, um, they're now still saying, oh, Takara needs to go to a normal school and stuff like that, a regular public school, which is um, still, again, out of their jurisdiction. And Takara's making her own mind up what she wants to do. If she wants to try school for a little while, I'm fine with that. If she wants to do online stuff, I'm fine with that, fine with that kind of schooling as well. So again, this business of having to micromanage people all the time, it's, it's, um, it's really quite weird. They've still got Takara's phone down in um, uh, the Alison Wilson has still got Takara's $1,000 phone that uh, we're really hoping will get sent back up to her and um, otherwise they'll be invoiced for that as well. We're trying to set up a trampoline today and it's triggered Takara in regards to the other children that she was living with, saying how much she just hates five-year-olds and six-year-olds because of the other traumatised children that were in the home with her that pushed her around and, and told her how horrible she was and that no one, you know, and all the children's trauma come out at each other in the homes. So Takara has disclosed to me that she would hide in the cupboard and, and had, you know, just, just nasty thoughts that weren't really her from beforehand. So yeah. this is what they do. They push you to this murderous kind of uh, hate that's not usually yours, shame that's not yours, guilt that's not yours, um, you know. And so we're really working with Takara for her to feel that, validate it and emotionally clear it. So not to be stuck in it is vital to feel through it, not to deny it either. So to feel through it and clear it. So we're working with like emotional clearing techniques with her and she felt a lot better after that. But no doubt there's going to be layers of it. Uh, the disempowerment, you know, is horrible. I think that's another thing that makes you want to take control over your life. And, you know, even times when I've wanted I've been dealing with them and they've made me feel disempowered or I've had to rewrite the story and visit it all again. And I mean, it just makes you want to stab yourself in the chest. It just it drives you to that frustration and insanity, which is not usually who we are. So, uh, you know, this is the damage that they cause. And can money fix that? I don't know. No, uh, not really. Just stop doing it, mm. you know, stop and correct basically. So, and um, redir redirect the resources as they did in um, yours and Takara's case to actually support the reunification of the family. You know, mm. they've got like basically an infinite budget 
you know, yeah. they can have as much money as they like for stealing children. The more children you steal, the more money that the pedophiles in Parliament will pump into this child procurement system. Mm -hmm. So they've got infinite resources that can be redirected now to creating actually healing pathways to reunification for all of these families and these mm -hmm. traumatised children and traumatised parents. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, that's right. And then we can go back to having due process. You know, there's still no due process. You know, let, let's fix the broken mess and, and start to have some due process for these poor children that are just getting sh shipped off to, like you say, it's like some stranger's place. And, you know, another one was shipped off to the brother's house and then the mother has can't talk to the brother or that whole family anymore. Mm. Cut off from Facebook, cut off from any contact. That is such a common scenario. Or the, or the, the you know, the, where the child gets shipped off to the sister's house, and then the mother and the parents of the child can't talk to that part of the family anymore. What kind of resolution mental case do they think that is? What's that? Yeah. And they're in another state. It's not as though they're going to steal them back. They, they've shipped them off to another state. The sad thing is I had that girl that was going to come on last week and uh, uh, I rang her back to say I had good news, which was I, she's not on Telegram, unfortunately, and she never actually responded about Telegram and she said, yes, she definitely wanted to catch up with us and she said the weekend was the only time and uh, so I organised it with Solly and I don't know whether the address put her off because maybe you've been in the news. You have to, you <laughs> just have to, the Sandy Creek standoff. Yeah. You just have to you just have to start making assumptions because Phil heard her. She sounded as keen as anything to do something. Mm, she knows she's not step. she's not going to get her kids back. And no. whether somebody's warned her off, when I asked her, I said, "Is anybody, you know, the reason you didn't turn up on Wednesday?" She said, "No, no, no. They just kept me running around. And I had to pay for psychologists. That's why I have to work all the time uh, to pay for the psychologists. And the kids are crying and begging me to come in to see the psychologist with them." So she said it was a very traumatic Wednesday. And on uh, Wednesday afternoon, after this call, she was keen. Mm. Sally got back to me, and I think Thursday we made the time. Yeah, she emailed me and said, yeah, I want to come on. It's very common, this. You know that Because DCP get in their ear. We have it. Is this, it at, um, is this, this J? Not, yeah. not J-O, not uh, J-A. J-O. J-O. Yeah. Oh, okay. She emailed okay. me and said, I want to be involved in the meeting. Oh, like, you know, and I forwarded it to Solly and we're like, okay. But, you know, if, if people... No, I, don't, I, I, I haven't responded to her since she said that um, she had a 10 o'clock, uh, she now had to work on Saturday. I just said, look, um, you know, we've met a couple of times. I know it's been really difficult, and um, but we're here. We see if, people have them jumping through hoops forever. Yeah, I said, just please call jumping me. Well, she hasn't rung me. So I, th I, thought I sort of thought that you can't keep chasing her. No, um, you can't. Uh, and this is got, another thing. She's got all of our details, Steph. I have oh, um, reached out yeah. to her on by email and um, given her information and an open invitation. So, you know, everybody is going through their own um, process and what they're dealing with, these families that have been targeted and are being victimised by the DCP, is the most cruel form of torture that I have yeah. ever witnessed. So... It's I really didn't give you her full name though, did I? So how did you, so she just contacted? I don't know. I just don't say a full name or anything. But you no. know, it's common. It's just what they they're traumatized. They're in, in the middle of trauma, and then the DCP say to them, "Now, don't you go speaking to those people? Don't you go speaking to those people that you know that got the good result?" Yeah. yeah. So more, this is this is um, common. This is actually what just, happened yeah. with Donna when um, she was supporting parents. Um, on Thursdays, I think it was, there was a DCP support group um, down at Lonsdale and the parents that were connecting with Donna and working with her um, got pulled aside basically by the DCP to say, uh, you need to stop that, you can't have that support group um, or we'll basically make your life even harder than it already is. You, you know never that. get your child back. They just threaten them. They just, because they've got the child, you know, so you'll just never see your child again. Mm. Yeah. 
So is it worth sending her another email? I don't have her email or anything like that. I just have a phone number. And no, uh, let, leave them. Let them reach out to us. We can't yeah. keep chasing and micromanaging people. We're here for them. If they, they want to do it in their own time, they may have been told to not contact us and then that's their free will. I was told to not to stop doing what I was doing as well, but DCP are null and void. So who's listening to them? Yeah. That's right. That's, that's yeah. really the shift in restoring divine and natural law is that we stop listening to criminals and liars and we start listening to our own hearts and our you know, actual support network of people, our family, our friends, our elders, uh, trusted people that actually care about us and our children because mm -hmm. that that's the real law, you know, these people that actually love and want to genuinely protect the child and the sacredness of the family, you know, as, as the natural protection and, um, yeah. you know, nurturing support system of the child that's the real law and yeah. we the people have to remember that so that when we're witnessing these absolute crimes against these children and families we can see it for what it is and call it out for what it is and be requiring that lawful remedy be implemented you know we don't and that's we don't... the dialogue they need to go in with Solly. you're exactly right if they just started going to meetings and started talking about, you know, due process and all are equal under the law and, you know, where where is, like, your due process, what have you, you know, th that's when we had them on the back foot pretty quick and then we went down there with Sandy and everything and, um, and that was just another, all the little bits and, and going public and everything, all those little bits were just more and more nails in the coffin for them. To the point where, like I said, they're paying for mum and dad to come down and, and couldn't get me out of South Australia quick enough, you know. This is where we want them for everyone. And people are going to keep complaining about it but not doing anything. Well, how can we help them? Mm. I don't know, Solly. How can we help them? If they won't even go into leaf side and put into, you know, executive crown life and put it in as child trafficking because they're too scared to write someone's name down. How can we begin to even help these people? I actually don't know. It was actually yeah. interesting today because I got up early uh, to listen to that um, Bosi and uh, General Flynn thing. General Flynn's basically saying there's people are going to have to get politically active. And uh, he talked about 100% accountability and he just said the rule of law. He used the rule of law. He rule said it just law. does it non-existent. Worldwide. Absolutely. And, he, and uh, what else you listen to? And that's for the prisoners as well, isn't it? It's not yeah. just the prisoners for the child trafficking, but it's the prisoners that are in our remark and uh, Yatla and uh, all the centres, you know, the ones that are getting treated worse than zoo animals. Yeah. I spoke yeah. to Peter this morning and he's getting treated worse than a zoo animal. Yeah, well, I I'm... thought that when I was in the cage, witnessing all the people in the cages, Donna, I thought... Like humans um, know that this is not okay for animals. Why do we not know that this is not okay for human beings? Mm. Like, how, what is wrong? Because with they're that? bad people. It's very distressing. <laughs> Indoctrinated. They're MK Ultra. You know, they're very distressing. People deserve to lose their child. You know, that's we've just been so totally turned upside down in our thought processes. That's mm. right. Everything has been inverted. It's yeah. all masquerading as child helpers yeah yeah and we need to turn it back up the right way get it back in you know the right order which is love is the highest law and mm. just coming back to that heart of our shared humanity you know that the vast majority of human beings know how to operate you know by the golden rule just treat other people how you want to be treated and the vast majority of people, um, you know, operate from a place of peace generally. People don't want to go around hurting each other or being harmed. There's only a small percentage of people that actually enjoy causing other people harm. And mm. those people have established this entire slave system and rewarded these really toxic values you know, that people have become predatory in nature because that's what gets you promoted in this yes, system. It's already in nursing, Solly. 30 years in nursing, the, the ones that were the hopeless nurses and had disgusting patient interaction would eventually go into management and then they'd be hopeless at management, but then they'd be at the top of management. And you just go, how did that happen? 
They were just good order followers. Shut mm-hmm. up and do what you're told. They're the ones that got promoted. Don't think for yourself now. If you're an older nurse that's thinking for yourself, you need to go. We want the oh. young ones that follow orders or the ones that just are so hopeless at nursing, they go into management and just climb the ladder and they're like, wow, how did you get there? They even would tell me themselves, I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, oh, oh. You know, in, in this breathlessness, saw it over and over again. And this is, must be what happens with DCP and a lot of them. It's just the corrupted order followers are the ones that get up there. Now, I froze the assets of ScoMo. I froze the assets of... Um, the Premier of South Australia and uh, Grant Stevens and Stephen Marshall, Joyce Clark, I'm telling you now, I froze all your assets through uh, the Crown uh, Crown Life Executive site. And so that is now time stamped so that if when we're going is for what you owe, the compensation for us, Kelly Cramped, a lot of yours, um, we have now time stamped what you own now. So don't try and move it sideways. This is another thing they'll do. We'll go for their assets and they'll shovel them off to their wives or husbands or kids and disappear it so they look like they've got no assets. So you can go in and um, do a timestamp to say, no, I froze your assets there. So what you had from the 21st was um, was what was uh, what they'll be uh, drawing from because this is a little trick that they're so good at doing. We're thinking of doing something with those um, affidavits that we sent to Stephen Marshall, Grant Stevens, Nicholas Spurrier, what the CEO of um, Hague's Chocolate TV stations, um, where it was bird in hand. And uh, so we just need to go, do we contact Leith about that on how to do that? Because we think that um, we need to freeze their assets because we sent notices. We just do it on the site. It's on the freeze asset thing on the site. Okay, just get orientated with that site. And, you know, per, per, my point being is these people, we have to ask who their names are. You have to know these people's names. If they're coming to take your children, who are, what are their names? Yeah. Get all their names. What's the due process? You know, they've, they've got no, they will come with no court order or anything. So you just keep saying over and over again, like, like in before we proceed part one, well, where's your certified verified cause of action? How come you're here? You know, this uh, notification, sorry, they don't count. You know, a bunch of crazies can put in notifications. Doesn't count. Notification should be put in under the penalty of perjury if they're not one. Should be put in under oath. If they're going to come and destroy families' lives, why are not notifications put in under oath and under the penalty of perjury? So if I can say, no, what Victoria said was a load of rubbish and I can prove it, then she gets in trouble. No, what Kerry said was a load of rubbish and I can prove it. No, what Je- what Ben said, what he said, what Mary said, what John said, and you can prove it, then they should get in trouble. I can tell you that it stopped false notifications like that. Yeah. I think the other thing, that, I'm just aware of the time, but um, the other thing for people, you know, who may potentially find themselves being the target of these professional child abduction teams is not to collapse into shame and let them isolate you. So yeah. it's if if they have threatened you, if you know that you know that you might be targeted, talk to people, tell people, mm. and get a support network around you. Um, mm. To the point of if they're coming to your home, call people that you trust to come to your home and help you physically protect your family. Mm. Like you know, I'm I'm not talking about attacking them I'm just talking about physically having your children not be able to have these strangers put their hands on them you have every right to physically protect your children you do not have to hand your children over to untrusted strangers that are unknown to you and unknown to your child and they work for a criminal corporation that is being controlled by pedophiles in parliament so they have no lawful authority, no jurisdiction of law here in Sovereign First Nations, and you do not have to hand your children over. And that goes for the same for all of these COVID fraud mandates where they've written themselves emergency powers acts to give themselves permission to, again, remove children and separate families into COVID isolation facilities and quarantine camps. All of that is unlawful. 
all of that is criminal corporations that have no jurisdiction of law. They are for-profit criminal corporations. And this is um, human and child trafficking. So you have every right and actually the responsibility to be standing in your power as the protectors of your children to say, no, no, sorry, you, you not touch our children and record it all. It all needs to be recorded and documented. So, you know, if you've got people turning up at your place, you want recording of all of their faces, all of who they are. And don't get caught up so much in the, um, you know, the dialogue of trying to know the technical terms. Just speak the truth. Just say, we don't know you. You're strangers to us. We don't trust you. You're not to touch our children. You know, just speak the truth as plainly as you can and record it and build your support network with other parents. You know, it's very important that we as parents are united and standing together, standing strong to protect all of our children because our strength is in our unity. Um, when they can keep us divided and isolated and then come in with their teens, because it is, it's terrifying, you know, when they come to the home to take your child and they can come to this school too, you know, they can, they can take your child from wherever they like according to their magical powers. Like that's not lawful. That, that's their criminal child abduction operations. Um, but they will send multiple SAFO officers with multiple DCP workers and it's incredibly overpowering and intimidating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, it's, yeah, it's very important that, you know, as a community, we are talking about this, seeing it for what it is, and everyone knows that nobody is under any obligation to hand your children over to these untrusted strangers. Yeah, you know to disappear your children from them really that was I was very very blessed with the miracle of getting to Cara back after that short time but even before when they came in that January on the 28th of January when they didn't take her that was a much better outcome not much better outcome um, if you can make it so they don't take them is much better um, and and I think this fear's got to go I just talked to people on the phone. And, oh, we know it's all recorded. Who cares? I want them to know. You know, this, mm. oh, 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 this breathlessness about emails and, and they can see everything. Well, good. I want them to because they're criminals. Yes. I want mm. them to hear my phone calls. I'll record them and everyone can hear them. That's yeah, the level right. of transparency that needs to happen. Yes. If you're still like, oh, don't, don't say mine. Or don't talk to about mine. Or don't, don't, don't. Well, you know. It's, it's going to be really hard for you. It's going to be really hard because that fear will be your undoing in the end. They'll get you. They'll see that fear. They saw no fear in me. They saw. They know they didn't. They know that they were defeated. They didn't see it. And, and they were defeated. We yeah, did that you hard. We pressed in hard for two weeks and then we went, okay, divine, up to you. And then phone called her mum, go and pick her up, done. So do you think it was mainly you? Mainly me? Mainly what? you? What do you mean? Or do you think it was the uh, publicity, the gazetting? or? I think you know? it was the social media was absolutely vital to make it that kind of transparency. And then they tried to tell me in meetings, oh, we're just being transparent. No, they're not being, they're never transparent. They're liars. So, yes, I think the public, um, going public with the transparency, I think I know for a fact you have to represent yourself in court and know your standing. If you don't know your standing under the divine crown on whatever nation you're standing on, um, you know, I was on Ghana and I acknowledged that and acknowledged superior jurisdiction every time I was in court. And then what happens, the judge becomes in error. The judge is actually being, my a magistrate Adiz has been stood down now by the grand jury and by we the people because she did not acknowledge my standing as an Eora Nation woman on Ghana Nation under the crown of God, not the crown of the Commonwealth, not the crown of the Queen, and then all the paperwork to back it up, you know, and they're, they're, corp, they're dead entity corporation. How can they have unbiased judgment when they've got financial gain from it? And you can only say that when you're not a lawyer. A lawyer's not going to say that. You can only say that when you're representing yourself because a lawyer has got financial interest in your matter as well. 
Yeah. Did you did you ask them about financial gain? Yeah, I think so. Absolutely, I stated that to them. And I then, said, how did you use? Is there an answer or not? Or they just shrugged it off? Oh, they looked, their professional face melted off their face. They just went. <laughs> so what so did you actually say? You have, I said, how can you have an unbiased uh, unbiased opinion in this matter, unbiased judgment in this matter, something like that, I said. Um, when you, you, DCP, they had their own crown there, you crown and you, Judge Adiz, all have financial gain from this matter. How can you have an unbiased um, opinion in it? Hmm. Oh, that'll be enough from you. That'll be enough from you. That's all they can say. And did you go to the clerk and say, please note that or anything? Oh, yes. Yeah, I spoke to the um, to the clerk a lot. I said, can you make sure that's noted, please? Uh, the first one I said, make sure that you note that I um, oppose this adjournment. Is that noted? Yeah. Oh, I spoke like the judge in the court. Absolutely. You have to have the standing. Of, you're above the judge as a living woman in the court as a living man or living woman. We know that, we've studied that under, that's basic affidavit common law stuff. You know, establish your standing as superior jurisdiction, know what your crown is and know what um, nation you're standing on. You have far superior jurisdiction to all of them in the court because they're all working for the dead entity, the corporation. The criminal Posey corporation, government. the criminal corporation that is trespassing. Yeah. So it has no position permission to be here and to be trading at all. You know, this is this is really the truth that sets us free, that, you know, we the people need to wake up to this reality. And yeah. they, they have been operating a criminal slave system of debt slavery and human and child trafficking um, since the false war arrived and started making all of its false claims here in the sacred First Nations land. So 233 years of genocide, which... And now know, we're getting a taste of it. Now we're getting a taste of having our children licked from our breasts and, and, and ripped out of our stomach and stolen and, and stuff jammed into our arms so we can live. We're getting a taste of genocide now, aren't we? And now we're all waking up. And now we're all joining together because we finally get what they've gone through. We're getting it now because we're going through it with them now. So luckily we can join together with our beautiful, you know, original tribal people and, and, and custodians of this land. And we can join together because we all have a common enemy called the corporation, the Australian corporation, also known as the fake Australian government. Yeah. Thank you. We're almost time up for our recording. Um, can I just I ask one other thing? Um, what did you call yourself when they said, is, are you Donna Markwell or whatever? I said I represent her I have, and then I, I stated my jurisdiction. How did, so how, what was the jurisdiction? We'll come back in the next meeting if you want and I'll unpack that if you want. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you all. And we'll get this one up so that hopefully those of you that are following um, can get some good information from this.